If you're a regular viewer of this channel, you'll be well aware of the benefits of exercise for various musculoskeletal problems. Weight loss, correcting joint alignment abnormalities, improving circulation, stimulating muscle and tendon repair, and freeing up nerve entrapment sites are all things a well-designed exercise plan can help with. But today, we wanted to focus on manual therapy, another intervention often used in conjunction by physical therapists for better treatment outcomes and why its effectiveness goes down the more BMI goes up. But first, as always, please take note of a disclaimer. Manual therapy techniques can help alleviate pain, improve mobility and enhance overall function. When you hear manual therapy, your brain probably jumps immediately to them manipulation videos online, where a practitioner rapidly cracks a patient's body part with seemingly instant relief afterward from whatever musculoskeletal problem they were suffering from beforehand. While indeed manipulation does fall under manual therapy, there are also several other forms like mobilization, myofascial release, trigger point therapy, muscle energy techniques, and even massage. It might be easy to think that manual therapy to treat the body is something that has come about in just the last few decades, but actually different types of it have been around long before that. With evidence of massage for therapeutic use even appearing in ancient Egyptian texts and tomb paintings. Indeed, the research on the effectiveness of things like manipulation or mobilization remains inconclusive for certain conditions. But for things like acute and chronic low back pain, cervical genic headaches, frozen shoulder, hip osteoarthritis and acute neck pain, a review by Braunfort et al. in 2010 suggests that these interventions can be advantageous for treatment outcomes. The difference between manipulation and mobilization is the intensity and speed at which the manual therapy technique is applied. Both are used to improve joint mobility, stiffness and pain, but rather than the quick high velocity movement seen with manipulation, mobilizations are slow and gentle. In this video, We'll concentrate on mobilization, one of the main strategies used in physiotherapy to manage neuromuscular pain. Yet, even though increased BMI worsens the likelihood of all the conditions mentioned a moment ago arising, the literature available concerning mobilizations and adiposity is lacking. Indeed, one study conducted on obese persons did show some positive results. In it, when one group wasn't given any mobilizations as part of the treatment for mechanical low back pain, the other that did saw significant superior improvements in range of motion and greater pain relief. So mobilization seemed to be useful in treating mechanical low back pain in obese patients. Nonetheless, no studies have been done to support it for alternative weight bearing joints like the hip, knee or ankle in obese persons exclusively. And no studies have compared their effectiveness for low back pain in obese patients against those of a normal weight category. And it's in our estimation that mobilizations will have a less positive influence for those above a BMI of 30 than those in the 18.5 to 24.9 range, particularly for joints located where fat tissue is more apparent. This is because the extra fat around joints will absorb and dissipate some of the force the therapist applies during the maneuver. Not just that, but the presence of excessive soft tissue surrounding joints can make it harder for your therapist to grip exactly where they need to in order to apply the mobilizations proficiently. Moreover, there's also associated biomechanical consequences of weight gain to deal with. People with a high BMI are more susceptible to a condition known as upper cross syndrome in which the hip flexors and lower back muscles shorten and the glutes, abdominals and hamstrings weaken. This is because fat builds up disproportionately on the front side of the body versus the back side, leading the pelvis to follow suit and tilt that way. And when this happens, the natural curve at your lower back will curve excessively inwards, creating excessive pressure on the lumbar vertebrae. Another consequence of this tilt is that the head of the thigh bones will internally rotate to compensate for the shift in the center of gravity, which will then mess with your knee and ankle too. Collectively, all of this worsens the mechanics of your weight-bearing joints, restricting their ability to move, meaning less potential range of motion can be obtained with mobilization techniques. Further, because changes in posture will also lead to muscular imbalances, muscular tension can develop, adding to the increased soft tissue resistance to contend with. 
going back to anterior pelvic tilt as one example, because the erectors get shortened, quite a lot of tension often builds up in these muscles for people meaningfully overweight, making getting at the lumbar joints in between with mobilizations that much more difficult. If you'd like to undertake our evidence-based and results-backed personalized Plato weight management program, please click the link in the top right-hand corner of the video or follow the link in the description. If you're someone overweight and has received manual therapy for a certain disorder, we'd love to hear from you in the comment section down below. And if you're new here, please make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. So that has been our video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.